Tire inserts, they're not without their controversies, but when you've got an easy to fit system that could save your tire, your rim, your wheel, potentially the back of your bike, why not try one? We're gonna show you a no mess fit technique for inserts. Inserts, or more fitting the inserts, was a bit of a faff. Early days, some of the systems out there were quite complicated and, well, there was, a, there was an engaging fitting system, to say the least, or you had to have very, very strong thumbs. But now there's lots of systems out there, Victoria and others, that make lightweight, easy fitting systems where the weight's been dropped and the protection's been boosted, so why not run them? Okay, before we get our hands mucky, it's one of those just little safety warnings. Fitting a tubeless tire and fitting an insert and you know converting a wheel to tubeless is not that risky to be to be honest. There's far riskier things that you can be fiddling with on a bike. However, if you're using the wrong rims, you're not using rims that are safe to use with inserts, you're not using tubeless ready or tubeless approved tires and you're not using the correct rim tape, things can get messy quickly and by messy, I mean, yeah, you could make a mess of your workspace and blow sealant everywhere, look like you've exploded a sealant bottle. But out on the trail, things could get messy in a kind of, hmm, maybe you have to go and see a dentist type way. Because if you have a sudden deflation, because the rim combo that you're running is not approved, or you have a sudden kind of rim explosion because it's not designed to be worked with an insert, things can get very messy and not in a just, oh, I'll clean it up with a bit of Dettol and a, and a wipe. It'll get really messy in a rough way. So make sure that you're using all the right parts and products together. Okay, for this task, you'll kind of obviously need a wheel and tubeless ready tire and rim strip. So that goes without saying. Extra stuff that you'll probably need is obviously tire levers. Well, not obviously, some systems you don't need them, but with an insert, it's probably best to have some insurance and save your thumbs. You'll also need a little container to put the excess sealant that's in your tire at the moment out while we insert the insert. Okay, first step is unseating this tire. So we're gonna to have to deflate it. Do it carefully and slowly so we don't get gloop everywhere. Once we've got the pressure down low enough, we can use the valve core removal tool, handily on the PT's valve, to take the valve out and get stuff going a little bit quicker. So just keep pushing the bead into the center section. Depending on what your rims, you'll have to use a bit more thumb effort than others. This Reynolds one has got a nice shelf for the bead, so, but it drops down into the well quite easily. So one side is off already. So I used the tire lever just to pop the, the top of the bead, and then I was able to get both hands around the tire and then pull it down and sort of around the rim. And then it just kind of de-beads really quickly. So it's quite a quick process. Now I've got a bit of excess sealant, so we're gonna, well not excess, we've got the sealant that's in there, and we're gonna pour that into our container. With the sealant safely poured away, it's now time to do a visual check of your rim tape. We don't wanna have any nicks or cuts in there, mainly because with this insert, this tire and wheel are gonna be on there for a while. So look all the way around the rim at the rim tape and just check if there's any small cuts. Sometimes if you're a bit heavy handed with a tire lever, some tapes are easy to cut. So just check that that's all set up correctly. Next thing to look at is your valve. It's really important to have a sort of like a crossed top or some kind of like buttressing on the top. And it's, it's not to make it look more regal like this PT's one, no, it's to help all the fluid flow and the airflow underneath the insert. So make sure that it's got either a cross top or like an exposed side air vents on your valve because otherwise the air won't flow and you'll really struggle to inflate your tire. With the rim tape and valve checked and the tire checked, now it's time to install the insert itself. This one's the newer shape Vittoria one. It's super light. This one's the downhill one, but uh, yeah, it's just time to feed the insert into that tire gap. So the insert goes in much like a semi-inflated tube. It is a little bit tricky, um, but I started opposite the valve and then worked my way around, starting kind of with both hands in the same point and then each inching a little section in. Uh, make sure that when you're getting up close here that you're pushing in the insert so it's up and inside so we've got lots of rim gap. But leave about a quarter, I often do it around the valve because it gives us a little bit more breathing space when we want to mount the tire at the end but we need this quarter section off and that's because we're gonna add that old sealant and then probably top it up as well. So time to get potentially a little bit messy. 
So I say mess. Now you may have watched my tubeless, patented, not patented, no mess tubeless setup guide before, but if you haven't, a brief synopsis is that opposed to fitting the tube, pouring in a couple of gallons of sealant, and then pumping frantically at a floor pump and expecting it all just to pop into place. What we do instead of putting sealant in is mount the tire, check that everything pops into place, so tire and the bead fits into place without any sealant. Then safe in that knowledge, we can pry just a small section of the bead off, then top up the sealant knowing that we're gonna be able to pump it up. And if we can't pump it up dry, well, we still won't be able to pump it up with lots of sealant inside. So if we've done it dry, it means we can easily add a couple of laps of rim tape, which will help bulk out the rim depths and should mean that again, you should be able to pump it up with just a floor pump. So assuming you've checked that, now it's time to put the sealant in and um, yeah, hopefully not get messy. As we've seen, I put in the remaining sealant that we had in there, but I'm gonna to top some up because with this insert, we're gonna have this tire on there a little while, so it's good time to top it up to the recommended amounts. And don't forget to err on the side of caution, so probably use a little bit more because as it's fixing a puncture, sometimes some of it can spray out before it seals and holds, so a little bit goes a long way. Super, now with the sealant inside, we're gonna just carefully roll this exposed quarter up and then we're gonna get the tire levers out. Just be mindful to keep the wheel upright at all times. Going to use our thumbs as much as we can, making sure to work the insert and the beads into the, the well of the rim. So just be really gentle with tire levers. Only use plastic ones because as we saw with the rim tape before, it's quite easy to nick it. So just be really careful and just tease the bead over the edge. So we've already removed the valve core because we used uh, that to get the air out even quicker and get on with the job a bit quickly um, and leave it out for when we inflate. It just helps that burst of air flow in. So time to inflate. Okay, I've over pumped it up to 30. We heard it pop and snap, but the next thing to do is just visually check that the bead is fully mounted on the rim. Check all the way around that it's really even and then it's time for a quick valve core installation. Lots of hissing, but hopefully no, no cuts. Okay, that's the insert inserted. It was really that simple. There wasn't any kind of magic. Okay, I've got a bit of tire sealing on my hands, but it is a really smooth process. And the fact that you can save, well, not only a tire, but a rim, even a wheel set with one of these inserted. And these ones are super light these days. This is the downhill one, so it offers a lot of protection. It's only 185 grams. It is super simple. Be mindful though, even though these are relatively low volume and low profile in the rim, they are gonna change the tire volume. So that's not gonna change how much pressure you put in. So if you're used to running, say 27 or 28 PSI in the rear, you can still do that. The pressure will still read the same on your gauge, but the volume in which you've got to play with is a little bit smaller. So I'd recommend using a digital gauge just to get the accuracy just perfect because that margin of error of having a really high volume tire is gonna be reduced. So the difference between maybe 26 and 28, whilst on your gauge might be very, very small, it will be a, feel a big difference with the insert inside because there's less volume in there, but yeah. Insert inserted, time to go ride.